All right, we, are, we have a little uh, bonus feature here from an unrecorded hangout that turned into a recorded hangout. We have a gentleman uh, who's an alfalfa um, uh, farmer in Oklahoma and uh, been collecting odd rocks on his property for 40 years. And usually that, that doesn't really catch my attention, but two of them are confirmed meteorites and they're already being classified at a lab. We've looked, the crew has looked at the samples. We agree they're meteoritic. And now we just wanted to hit record on this. He has some other samples that may be meteorites. They may be earth rocks and the crew is gonna give them our feedback. So thank you, sir. We appreciate you joining us. And the crew already gave their opinion on this one. I'll let Pat and everyone repeat themselves. Yeah, so this one uh, from the, on the inside, we can see a number of crystalline faces that are sparkling. And uh, the, the color of the outside of it is, uh, you know, is atypical for fusion crust, uh, but it has a very glossy sort of look to it. And I see conchoidal fractures in a couple of spots. So this one, this one is going to be some form of SiO2 uh, quartz or chert or jasper or, mm -hmm. or something similar. Yeah. Okay. And the what looks like it may be confused as fusion crust on the outside is definitely not fusion crust. It's it's actually part of the rock. It, it's a, it's a like a layer on there. Yeah, I think um, it's I, I think it's fair to call it a weathering rind. Yeah. Okay. Well, awesome. and sometimes even you get where um, liquid silica forms in little voids like vugs. And so the outermost is more mineral exposed to the matrix and then the innermost. That's why you'll see some dark rings and stuff forming in um, some like calcidneys and, and, and stuff. And as you go towards the center, it gets more pure silica and starts mm. to crystallize like larger quartz. Awesome. Okay, well, let's see another sample. I just want to point out, you know, to people that are watching that don't know the crew, that a lot of the crew are actually rock hounds or were rock hounds long, long, long before they started collecting meteorites. So they're not talking just because they're talking. They have the experience of looking at hundreds, thousands of rocks and cutting them and, and everything. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bruce. Yeah. And I, I'm not a rock hound, but I've looked at and felt and touched probably 100,000 meteorites by now. So I know meteorites, and we also have Mike Kelly, a geologist who does our 101s, and he's more knowledgeable than the entire crew put together. Yes, so I uh, I'm not liking this one. Meteor wrong on this one. Um, the uh, the, the black band on it surface is. Uh, yeah, does does not look like um, does not look like fusion crust. The interior again looks like quartz. Uh, that black layer there is far too thick to be fusion crust. So I I think I think earth rock on this one. Yeah, I'm this, this looks like quartzite or maybe some chert. Yeah, some SIO. sort of micro microcrystalline silicon dioxide. Yeah, the other interesting thing about it is if you look at these, some of the edges of what looks like uh, it would be crust, uh, it blends into the, the matrix a little too much. Whereas if you had crust and it was was chipping off, you have clean breaks, not smooth transitions. True. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. It'd be really helpful to watch our episode on the fusion crust and external features to help rule out a lot of those uh, specimens you might have. Yeah. For, for everyone on YouTube, that is, yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and let's, let's take a look at the next one. I don't know how many there are, so I just wanna, wanna turn and burn here. Thank you so much for sharing these. Same. Mm -hmm. I find some that look like that sometimes. Yeah. I think the entire crew is sh uh, shaking her head at this one too. We, we don't so like this the, one. Is so a minute ago I mentioned how sometimes 
silicon dioxide or quartz or whatever type of of quartz we're talking about forms in vugs do you see the weather like on the outside where you've got all those little holes and stuff right there yep right yep. so like if you could picture like a piece of and correct me I, i'm just going to say limestone it's not limestone because it doesn't form in limestone very yeah. often but that <laughs> those little dents and that texture is the original surface and correct me if i'm wrong mike but the original surface of the inside of that bug right and as the silicon starts to to deposit on that you end up with these textures that texture right there is very um telling to me that it's some sort of quartz or it formed in a bug yeah this i think this one is quartzite if you, if you rotate it back down and show us the fractured surface uh, you can see the, the white feathery sort of look there and the very brittle fracture pattern. That, that one is, is quartzite. It's uh, some sort of par partially crystallized quartz, SiO2. Mm -hmm. Agree. And quartzite and both quartzite and chert often have that really dull, um, not very vitreous when it's on the broken fractured edge. It's very dull and and I don't know how to describe it other than dull. You're dull. I am dull. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the next one, please. Yeah, we got a smart crew. I'm loving this. But remember, one thing to keep in mind is when you, I hate being asked to ID stuff because it's just overwhelming. I get too many requests, um, but that's not because I don't hope you have a meteorite. Trust me, I want everyone out there to have the experience of finding a meteorite. And I'm, we're not trying to keep meteorites off the market. We just want to save our scientists and their lab equipment as much time as possible by only testing good specimens. And we want to save you money. You don't want to pay for a classification if it's not a real meteorite, so. Exactly. This is su this is such a good opportunity for Mark to share his other finds for the past forty years he's been collecting as well. That's mm -hmm. that it's really mm -hmm. interesting, and he he's come up with two beautiful meteorites to top it off. That's confirmed so far. Yeah, this one is a big negative. Yeah, I think Earth Earth Rock on this one too. Uh, it's. It's really quite pretty inside. It is, isn't it? <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, the the uh, uh, the surface layer that we can see the the bottom of uh, the edge on the bottom there is white, and uh, yeah, that's that's some sort of a calcium or lime buildup on the surface. But yeah, the the rest of it just doesn't look doesn't look right. And one thing that I'd like to add is if you turn it back the other way so that we can see that cut side again. When you turn that and it flashes and it looks like metal, but when you look directly at it, it's actually black in color and it should shine like a chrome bumper if it's actual meteorite metal, unless it's really, really weathered, which this stone doesn't appear to be a weathered meteorite. Right, Great. the metal should, it should look, look like fresh cut rebar. Yep, very silver. And and while that shines kind of a metally color, when you look directly at it, it's it's black. Yeah, I think that these are great points. I think that shine that we're seeing is from more of a polishing effect than a cutting effect. Uh, it 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 polished those areas, and that's why they're they're more reflective. Mm -hmm. Another important diagnostic is as it's moved around, we can see some some small crystal faces uh, reflecting back at us. And that's that's exceptionally uncommon in meteorites. You can right. find it in in only a very very few uh, achondrite meteorites. Looks like it could be galena. Well, it could be any ore. That's yeah, including magnetite, magnetite or hematite. Yeah, exactly. If it streaks, if that gray stuff streaks, it's bingo. Yeah. All right. Let's see the next one. Are you learning cool things as we look at your rocks? Yes, I am. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. We're glad to help. Yeah. Hopefully, we're not kicking you too hard, but we're we, we're gonna we're gonna we're not gonna sugarcoat if it's a terrestrial rock. Right. That's, what, uh, 
Well, and you know that, that and that's there's a really important point there that this is about the science. This is not about emotion or right. Mm -hmm. Is that part of a crust right there? That's looking better, but I'm not certain yet. Yeah, I haven't seen anything obvious with that with a no on this one just yet. Is it, I mean, it doesn't look like much, much on the inside. But. Yeah. Oh, that. I think that looks good. That looks better uh, than the others you've had. Now there's uh, there's some, uh, some holes and voids there along the yeah, okay. crack. Yeah. And yeah, I was going to say that looks like along a weathering crack. So that's still not a no for me. There are a lot of sparkly small there crystal surfaces sparkly. inside. Are the yeah are those things that are sparkling at us? Are they bits of metal or bits of crystal? Again, um, hold it face at us so that we're not there. seeing it reflect, but looking directly. Uh, those are crystalline. Uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, I think that one is a wrong. Yeah. And I bet that is a heavy stone in hand and, and feels substantial, but I agree with Pat. I think that that is a meteor wrong. Yeah. What, what does the magnet do with this one? A yeah. magnet might even stick to that. Yeah, it doesn't. No. Okay. Yeah. yeah then that's okay. The the deciding factor for wrong, the crew, man. I th the the deciding factor for the crew is if you turn it over and show us the because that that's convincing. But if you show us the cut side, and we focus on the sparkling, we want to see nickel iron metal. Like we said earlier, it should be bright. It should reflect right back to us. It should be that polished look of metal, and we're mm -hmm. seeing that as it flashes. But that's very confusing to us because we're not holding the piece and looking at it and seeing that it's not metal shining back at us it's crystals that are that are catching the light and shining back so that's yeah. why the crew is saying terrestrial in this one and, and you can distinguish between crystals and metal uh even, even in a lower resolution video like this because zoom uh down grades the resolution but as you tilt the stone a crystal face will flash only very, very briefly, and a metallic mm -hmm. surface will reflect for a much greater range of angle. Mm -hmm. so, and so. if you get yourself just a little jeweler's loop and have a good close look at some of that, you'll be able to see a lot clearer whether it's a silicate or an actual piece of nickel iron. Absolutely, okay. perfect, yeah. But that one right there, you had the crew excited. Let's see another it's one. Looking good for a second. <laughs> Yeah, I told you we want you to find. We want everyone to find one. <laughs> it's a good looking yeah. meteor. Wrong. Yeah. I think this is actually the same material. Same stuff. Maybe. Let's take a look at it. Well, oh, it's more of that. Yeah, that one is not going to be a meteorite. That's yeah, not a meteorite, right. but not not the same material. Yeah, not the same material. Um, the uh, again, that metal flash only at the right angle there. That kind of metallic, but black when you look at, directly at it. Not meteorite metal. Yeah, I think that's some sort of a concretion. Yeah, it, almost it like an iron nodule. If you look at it, it looks like it has an epicenter, and meteorites don't have epicenters. I'd still yeah. like to see that one polished. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, bet, I bet that's yeah, pretty exactly. polished. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, I polished yeah. it a little bit with the with the emery cloth, you know, mm -hmm. with sandpaper. Again, there's there's uh, crystal and faces in there that are reflecting back at us, uh, just for very narrow angles. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm I'm confident that one is. Well, then let's, let's say that it was a meteorite. Let's assume that it would look maybe like a palisite with the metal and the the um, silicates together there. That would be one huge silicate huge inclusion. Yeah. yeah. So massive. Yeah. Yeah. The size, the size of that concretion, that 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 center thing, the nodule, whatever, is just it's too big. And yeah. it looks, it's too much crystal. There's hmm. crystal and faces reflecting back on the outside as well. It looks like an aging avocado. 
<laughs> so does your mom. <laughs> I'm just joking. She's a beautiful woman. Uh, now you get no dinner. <laughs> she she doesn't know how to work YouTube. Okay, well, go ahead and grab the first two, the confirmed one, just to show everyone that it is possible if you have enough acreage. And we're talking about uh, there. There's a lot of acreage here that these were collected over um, over 40 years. Uh, these two within the last 10 years, I believe. But this is 100% a meteorite. Yeah, that one looks good to me from the things we were discussing before. It, it's obviously very weathered, and there's uh, material in the in the weathering cracks that is, you know, terrestrialization. Um, yeah, I think that one is right. Uh, Let's see the exposed side one more time. Uh, yeah, in there, um, you, we can actually see chondrules in there especially down your thumb around like seven o'clock eight o'clock we see a lot of chondrules in there and it's uniform and throughout it's consistent there there's no like we said in the other one it was an epicenter of a big blob with all the stuff around it this is more uniform this is more it's not as well it's chaotic but it's it's the the beauty and the chaos is it's, it's just spread out over the canvas evenly um, when we do see stuff flashes, if you can you try to get it to flash at us, maybe go back and forth a little bit. We don't see a whole lot of stuff, but right, yeah, right there by your at nine o'clock, you see that that thing at perfectly at nine o'clock. Yep, uh, it, nope, down a little bit more in, in the very center. It is super bright metal shining at the, and it doesn't just glint like like Pat said. It's right there. You have it highlighted perfectly. Pat was saying a crystal just blinks at you. If you look at that, that is a piece of metal. It stays lit in about probably 15 degrees. Mm -hmm. It doesn't just glint at you. And if you look closely through this entire piece, especially like, like uh, I think Allison said, grab an eye loop, uh, like a little uh, six times or 10 times eye loop, go through there. You're going to find a lot more metal bits in there that'll, that'll shine just like that one. And you should be able to see chondrules throughout as well. It looks like in that piece. And the weathering cracks too are are, are uh, diagnostic as well. Most most earth rocks won't uh, won't have weathering cracks like that. And what's what's going on there is the water gets down into the stone, rusts the bits of metal, and pops the cracks open. And also when you when you pay attention with an eye loop on this one, look at the outside of it where we see glints of stuff glinting at us. Um, if you look at them with an eye loop, you'll you'll confirm that they're polished off little metal blebs. Mm -hmm. And that's that's why they're glinting at us. They're not crystals embedded anywhere. They're literally exposed, polished little metal flakes. If you turn it towards us one more time. Uh, yep. No, no. Turn it back over the other way. The outside again. That face right there where you cut with the first saw right in the middle, just off the middle. Below that big crack is a good piece of metal. If it's not a big piece of metal, it's a big white chondral. Put a magnet on it. There like you go. right underneath your magnet. Yep. I think, I think that actually is a, is a nice white chondral, if, if I'm seeing it correctly, because I don't see it glinting. But that that is amazing. So that is a weathered. We believe it to be like an H four or something like that. But we're not doing the scientific testing. This one's actually at a at the Field Museum in Phoenix in uh, Chicago. Yeah, sample of it is yes. Yeah, that is awesome. And can you show off the other one real quickly? Because this one, this one has a lot, a lot of metal in it. Oh yeah, yeah, that Absolutely. one. That one looks really good. I'll I'll eat my hat if that one's not a meteorite. <laughs> yeah, that is a definitely like an H day. or something. It's a meteorite. Was that Daniel Shake on the phone? 
run along with us? Yeah, hey, Tuffer. Right. Hey. hey, buddy, how are you, man? Well, uh, we're not we're not going to quote we're not going to quote you on this. But you have a professional meteorite classifier on the phone. I know he uh, and uh, he's a lunar guy, but he knows a chondrite when he sees one. <laughs> Don't hey. worry, forget forget that forget that I'm not here. Yeah, <laughs> see your samples, and that's a beautiful sample, by the way. Looks yeah, like an that H, is amazing. Maybe a five ish. Might have some melt pockets in there. It looks kind of darkened. Pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. This is this is this is what keeps me going through all all the crazy people that contact me that to hopefully find someone who was actually found two real and we think these are uh, different meteorites. We looked at this one versus the other one, and uh, we we compared them. I know that uh, if we look at the matrix, for one thing, I'll let other people talk too. But the matrix in this one, the inside of the rock is a lot darker than the previous one. Can I sneak in a bit of advice real quick? Yeah. I would, I would suggest that you get a, a slightly bigger magnet than the one you have here at the house right now that you're showing us with, and that you attach it to the end of a ski pole or a wooden stick or anything. Test that magnet on these two samples that you do have and get a feel for how that magnet attracts to those stones and then take it out with you whenever you're doing farm work or yard work or whatever. And you're gonna get some earth rocks that stick to your magnet, but get familiar with how they feel against those samples. And that'll help you to eliminate some of those jaspers and quartzites and things like that versus meteorites when you're out and about. Okay. All right, I'll do that. Yeah, and and not not all meteorites will attract a magnet, but the the ones that will not are the you know the achondrites and some of the planetary things uh, are really quite uncommon. So uh, you know we 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 caution people a bit against using the magnet test or the so-called magnet test as a first test, and it's actually not very valuable for that. But after we uh, look at the stone sum, it is very valuable to know what happens with the magnet. And uh, sorry, Mark, I had one quick question for you. Is, is your uh, land that you're farming uh, relatively free of terrestrial rocks? Yes, it is, yes. Okay, so yeah, that, yeah. that was one of Dr. Neininger's um, uh, success angles that he used and you know if, when you're when you're in an area that has been intensively cultivated uh not overworked but i mean it's, it's been plowed and been used uh and you do come across a rock it automatically becomes suspect yeah. right and that's wow. the reason i picked some of these up if, if it looked like it didn't belong there then, then i'd stop and pick them up right that good is, work that is absolutely amazing i'm really glad that our, our secret guest joined us today and i'm glad that we were able to hit the record button on this because this is a kind of information i think is very valuable to a lot of rock hounds out there so i'm really hoping that people watch this video and learn from it you have a lot of intelligent people here with a terrestrial background and also some very knowledgeable people who are actively engaged in the science of meteoritics and a lot of people like me who just pretend they know a lot. So thanks a lot for joining us on this little um, bonus episode. Now we're going to get back to the unrecorded part. <laughs>